Hey there, party goers. I'm Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis. And maybe you're tired of the tavern, or pissed at the pub, and been done with the beer garden, and fed up with the fest. Certainly, there's another way to start that campaign, and we're going to talk about it today on WebDM. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by Adventurers and Adversaries. If you need minis that are gonna stand out, and who doesn't, this is the Kickstarter for you. They've got figures that work for all types of ancestries, including turtle people, dragon people, minotaurs, demon folk, cat people, and even bird people. With multiple sculpts planned for light, medium, and heavy armor types for each ancestry, each kit comes with multiple arm, head, and even tail options for the ultimate in customization. They're designed with storytelling in mind, Clothing and equipment options reflect a depth of culture for each ancestry perfect for D&D, Pathfinder, you name it. These folks are class acts. Their last Kickstarter fulfilled three months ahead of schedule and shipping is super cheap. Check it out. Link here and in the comments and description. Okay, Jim, it's the beginning of the campaign, but where do you begin? Ah, the campaign. Where do you begin? How, how do you, do you do it? How do you do it? How do you, how do you do it? We're talking first level here, right? First level, we've assumed that we've got a session zero, and some groups like to have like their setup for their campaign dealt with in session zero, you know, how they know each other, how what, oh, their, yeah. what their overall goal is going to be. We're assuming that this is not the case, and that you're looking for ways to kind of either get a game started where you, you want to have just a little bit of free form mm -hmm. to see what the players are interested in before you like focus in on that for the campaign. That's how I run a lot of uh, the games I run now where it's like, I will start a campaign, it's just, I, I don't know what we're doing. Uh, I've, I've got a world partially filled and, and you've made characters for it and then I'll wait. I've got enough going on, we'll, we'll do something. You know, yeah, there'll yeah. be something that happens. Um, but it might take a few adventures before uh, the, you know the players know their characters well enough that they can start you know giving goals to for themselves, uh, or they run into something in the world that that uh, hooks them in and they pursue that. Mm -hmm. So it is okay to kind of start a game with a bit of meandering, and mm -hmm. it doesn't need necessarily to be this big you know pow we're done you know oh my god it's the campaign start like. They, the beginnings of campaigns already have some hype to them already. You know, you're like new new game, new characters. There's yeah. a freshness to it. New year, new PC. At the same time, the first session can have a, a real impact on the game. And if you've got a strong first session, a session that like firmly locks in what uh, you want your campaign to be about, mm -hmm. particularly if you do have an idea in mind for like say a villain or or a situation that's gonna span the entire uh, campaign that you're playing in, you know, you maybe do want to provide something that's a bit more structured, a bit more uh, provides impetus and motivation uh, for the campaign. Yeah, so there's okay. a lot of different ways you can do it. You yeah, know? well, uh, let, let's jump into that because, I mean, this was uh, this was like a viewer request, like, yeah. you know, how to, how to start, like, at first level. Yeah. Because, I mean, for me, I normally start my games at least third, especially in fifth edition. Oh, sure. And I see that that's kind of a norm. That way everybody yeah, no, has their no. subclass. Nobody's, hey, that's how Gary did you know, it in his own game. Exactly. <laughs> but I do see the benefit yeah. of starting at first level because especially maybe if you have new players. Yes. You have, maybe you have a mix. That way it gives you some time to figure out the system. Yeah, uh, And maybe even figure out your character. Definitely, right? maybe definitely. it's Maybe you're one of the classes that doesn't get their subclass till third level, and you don't know. Like, I don't know if I want to go, you know, this or that, you know, a champion fighter or battle master. Yeah, yeah. Um, so where do you, like, where do you like to start the action, and, like, where do you like to, how do you like to get the band together, mm -hmm. so to speak? And where do you like to, how do you like to start that action off? Yeah, yeah, so the, when I'm thinking about uh, how I, how I want to kick off a campaign, how I want to get things going, I, I try to keep several things in mind. One of them is that the point of a first session is to begin to, it doesn't need to fully come together, but it's to begin to, to draw the party together. Now, D&D and, and, and most other role-playing games come with the sort of metagame conceit that... Uh, you are a party of adventurers who are going to experience this adventure together. There's a lot of groups now who sort of have a, um, you know, sort of a house rule, a, a play style that assumes that at some meta level the party will stick together and you will avoid things that, um, you know, that, that drive a wedge between that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the only way to play. There's a lot of groups and it's a very satisfying way to play where you don't necessarily know each other. There's not necessarily a commitment to always keeping the party together. Players can feel a bit more free to pursue their own goals. And there's an understanding that that means less 
time for like your individual spotlights, but when you get it, it's going to be doing what it is that you want. And then right. it's up to everyone to make sure that people are included, that like, all right, even though we're going to do the mages thing today, uh, Cleric and Fighter are gonna tag along because they have something, like there's, they have uh, adjacent interests, mm -hmm. you know, or, or, you know, Fighter's doing it to uh, curry favor and, you know, just do the wizard a solid. Uh, so that later on down the line, they'll, mm -hmm. you know, sort of return the favor and... And the cleric's doing it because he doesn't trust the wizard. He doesn't trust the wizard. got to keep an eye on that freaking <laughs> right. wizard. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of this is worked out at the player level. So you're making decisions about what your characters are going to be doing, uh, you know, that with the eye towards let's keep them together, even though, like, it's a little implausible that these three people who kind of just met each other recently would be going on these life and death situations mm -hmm. voluntarily... You sort of like suspend your disbelief, yeah, and and you know, don't even you know, just don't think about it too hard, because eventually it won't matter. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, yeah, no, I I totally get that. Do you think maybe that's why sometimes uh, you you see like the starting the first adventure in the action? I to, think you hear that. Yeah, give that galvanizing bond yeah. to yeah. the party. Like they've gone through life and death, like. In, at the beginning, yeah, right, yeah, that kind of like starting off in media res, uh, you know, the first words of the campaign, a role for initiative, oh, and that sort of thing, and I, I, it gets brought up a lot in advice for like how to kick off a campaign, uh, where it's like, yeah, start in the middle of the action, do this, and it, it sounds nice, yeah. and I think, it, I think if you're uh, skilled and and have a plan and a structure, mm -hmm. you can start out that way. I have not done it successfully, which maybe tells you more about how I plan and structure things than anything else. Yeah. And uh, for me, when I've attempted it, I found that the difficulties are uh, a, a sort of a lack of context or, conf or, or, or some kind of confusion on the players' parts. And that, this is even when you're just kind of like explaining what the setup's going to be. You guys are going to play, you know, this is sort of the setting, here's who your characters are, uh, and, and this is where we're going to start. There's still some, you know, we don't know exactly who these are. And especially if you're running a combat and you're running a combat for new players, you know, they're not familiar with the system or uh, you've got players where they're playing characters that they might not be familiar with those classes. Throwing them in the deep end of combat has the potential to be to, to not go the way you would like it. You might be facing a situation where it's like, I'm having to like fudge to avoid a TPK on <laughs> my first time out the gate or you know, it's, it's a fight that lacks uh, passion. It lacks mm -hmm. consequence. It's just, it's perfunctory. We're just doing it to, because this is what they said we needed to do. Right, right. If what you're looking for is investment, if what you're looking for is like to get the players hooked to their characters, to have them uh, identify something in the campaign world that's going to propel them forward, then I think building up to, but having a big action set piece in, in your first uh, session is probably the way to go and... Um, you know, not necessarily have it where it's like, all right, we're gonna start out the campaign and you're all in a caravan. It's being attacked by orcs right now. Roll for an issue. What do you do? There's plenty of, uh, of you know, players who are gonna feel like, can we back up? Yeah. How do I know everyone? Why am I here? And this is where play style and yeah. priorities of play and why are you- I'm a hermit who's never left my hut. Why am I in a caravan? <laughs> yes, <laughs> like all yeah. of those kinds of things can introduce hiccups. Mm -hmm. So. It's not to say, you know, never start in the middle of the action. Mm -hmm. It's just if you do, be mindful of those things that can trip it up because there's, trust me, there is nothing worse than thinking, I am going to start this game off with a bang in combat and it falls flat. The other thing is, is if it's combat, you need to be prepared for the worst. <laughs> you know, like don't roll those dice. Don't put them in that situation if you're not prepared to follow it through. Yeah, and and you know it, it's one of those things where it's like you don't want to be fudging a bunch in your first uh, encounter that you have in the campaign. You don't want it to fall flat on its face, so it's risky. Uh, but it's an alternative to what was previously kind of the standard, which was you meet in the tavern and faff around for a while and maybe go shopping and do some other stuff. And it's not particularly exciting or, or thrilling, but it's also a great way to just ease things in. Get, have the players get to know their characters, have the characters get to know each other. You know, you're, you're starting the game, so there's some people who are maybe still last minute questions about their characters or something. Yeah. And that kind of like starting off slowly, allowing like role playing and the like to, uh, to dominate for a while before the actions introduced can actually be uh, a really satisfying way. 
you know, even though a lot of people are like, I don't want to meet in a tavern or I don't want to do just a bunch of talking and, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, don't, don't start your campaign that way. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but the action will eventually happen. And one of the things about being first level is that you're first level. You don't have a lot that you can do. You got some stuff. You don't have a lot of hit points. You yeah. got some. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you toe that line and make it challenging but not too deadly? Honest, honestly, I don't worry too much about that. I don't worry too much about the deadly part, right? Like, I, I will let a group know, you know, I'm not going to deliberately set out to kill you unless you know that's what the the monster wants to do but I'm not necessarily gonna pull punches or you know do something that's going to play things in your favor I want to be I, I like the classic I'm a neutral arbiter of this world I am the referee yeah. and a referee is a neutral party uh, they you know they arbitrate if I was worried about killing them if I wanted to have some kind of action scene uh, or something something thrilling mm -hmm. but I didn't want there to be the possibility of death then I might have a brawl of some kind. Doesn't have to be a tavern brawl. It could be a street riot uh, or something like that. It could be, um, you know, getting uh, mugged uh, or something on, in one of these big fantasy cities. Um, it could be a tournament with like a practice uh, bout or match or something. You could have a chase or a race or something like that where you're, you know, you're still rolling your physical stats. The character's still doing physical things. It's action. It's tense, who's going to win, who's going to lose, that sort of thing. But it's the stakes are lower in some senses, or could be much higher. You know, the, there could be a lot at stake for that race uh, or contest or something. Um, so those are things that you can do. Setting, it, setting your first uh, few scenarios, first few sessions in like a festival or a tournament or a joust can provide the outlet for discrete, non-lethal <laughs> action mm -hmm. And then you can work your way up towards, especially if you're playing with new players or getting used to the system that you're playing, you can like work your way up towards the big stuff. Yeah. You know, just remembering and keeping in mind that nervousness is normal. Uh, it, it's probably not going to go the way you want it to. And it doesn't for me now, some 20 odd years later after playing it, they still get nervous occasionally. They still get, why do I feel weird about this thing? Or, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, five minutes after the, the session ends, Oh crap, I forgot to mention this very important thing. <laughs> I literally do that every other session where I'm like, I have a very important thing I need to get right before combat and then we're done with combat and I'm like, by the way, the guy said this. Yeah, Fuck. yeah, and that's why, I, that personally for me, that is, and this is a tangent, not necessarily related to opening your campaign, but like that is why I started thinking of those things in terms of just what's the, what's the information I want to deliver and like how many vectors can I think of for it because I am going to miss one of them. I need another way to get that information mm -hmm. to the players. So oh, that's that's a sort of way. But um, first sessions, right? They 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 bear a lot of weight. You know, a, a bad first session can can mean the only session of a campaign. Mm -hmm. you, you might have a, a first session of a campaign that's just kind of half baked, and your excitement and enthusiasm for playing got the better of you, and now you find yourself after. You know, nearing the end of your first session, it's like, crap! I don't, I have no idea what to do next. <laughs> you know, I've used up all my, all you know, the material that I prepped. It is important, and you know, it can really set the tone. It can really set the pace. But I would also caution about like putting too much on it, of getting like really, you know, building it up and making yourself super anxious because it's like it's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Most everybody there wants to have a good time. They, yeah. they, they want you to succeed as Dungeon Master. They, right, they, right. Well, but, I mean, that's the, th and that's the thing to keep in mind, though. I mean, like, the whole point of this is just like, you know, you're, all, you're starting at first level character, so, like you said, the stakes are low. Yeah. They can be high behind the scenes. Yeah. But what they're dealing with is like, you know, you'll have time to, to implement other things. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to, you know, these, these, these early sessions... Uh, low level. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you try to get how do you try to get them to engage with the world? Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is apart from the you know s similar topics that we've talked about and like tips for new players or tips for new DMs. Um, I go check out those shows if if you are a new player or a new DM looking to start your first campaign. But like, the big ones are looking and seeing not just what the players have written on their character sheets but asking them, talking to them. And like, for real though, DMs, you can straight up ask your players, what would you like to have happen in this campaign? Like you can seriously go, how would you guys like to start this off? Like, 
it, it, there's nothing wrong with uh, with directly asking and then incorporating that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I resist it when it comes to magic items. I know that there's some DMs who are like, give me a wish list and I'll work these in. I resist that, but I'm totally like... Yeah, you're not Santa. Yeah, you know? come on. For real, though. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, you know, I started uh, an aquatic adventures campaign where, where uh, you know, I encouraged the, uh, all the players to make, uh, you know, like tritons and merfolk uh, and, and things like that. And, and then, basically, once they'd had some ideas for characters, was like, all right, well, when you guys think of an aquatic campaign, when you guys think of, like, underwater and undersea adventures, what are some things you think of that, if they didn't happen... If the situation didn't come up, that you would think you missed out. And then it was a whole host of things. Fighting a kraken, uh, romancing a mermaid, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, all the, just a whole big list. That The Lonely Island song, I'm on, like, all the whole part of T-Pain, they wanted all of it. They're just like, go read the lyrics, that's what's going to, that's what they want. Mm -hmm. the, so I, it was easy enough then. I, whenever I find myself lost in that campaign after the first session, I can go back to those notes and I, there's like 20 items on that list of like things that they want. They wanted a treasure map. They wanted uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. And I, out of that list, I was able to construct an opening scenario of half a treasure map, pirates looking for the other one. Second level, I had them fight a kraken. One of their characters survived a grazing hit uh, from it and uh, the rest of them bugged out because they didn't want to get anywhere near a kraken. And <laughs> we want to find a kraken. Oh, your second level. Oh, your second level. <laughs> Roll initiative. There's yeah. a kraken. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, there were NPCs there. Yeah. It was really fun because it was. It, it, you know, it's very custom. It's very what they want. It's not a traditional D and D game because they wanted a game of like romance on the high seas, and that's just a different kind of thing than like grungy dungeon delving. Yeah. You know? It's romancing the boat. Oh thing. sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, otherwise known as the love boat. <laughs> Talking about like kind of moving up through like first, second, third level. How do you feel about like ways to set up those subclasses that do happen mm. at a little bit later? You know, not, not, you're, yeah. not, you're not first level, what, first level cleric. Sorcerer, you know, cleric, I'm trying to think of the others that have. There's a few of them. Something at first level. Yeah, um, sorcerer and cleric are the ones. That but you know, like those fighters, yeah. rogues, wizards that, you know, they're waiting two, three levels yeah. before they can finalize yeah. You know, finalize where their character's going. Like, how, oh, do you, yeah. how do you try to work that in and work with them and set it up mm. so it, it makes more organic sense, I guess? You know? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things you're doing whenever you're setting up your campaign and, and, and running that first session is, like, establishing important NPCs yeah. for, for your campaign. And those can be, like, mentors and trainers and people that are uh, nominally friendly to the PCs that you can then... Um, use to use like create links to the game world. So if I had a, a fighter in the party and they're like, hey, I don't know, do I want to be a champion? Do I want to be a battle master? I, I wouldn't necessarily do fully fleshed out NPCs for each subclass, but I would have an idea of what I would do for the specific subclasses that that player was looking for. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm not going to go all out and take all 12 classes and have many subclasses there are for them and think up things for each of them, but I am going to talk to the PCs and go, you're playing a fighter? Um, do you have an idea of what you might like to do at third level? Uh, is it, you know, have you thought about it? Uh, do you want to be surprised? Um, you know, some players have already given it some thought and, and know what they want to do. And some players have already mapped their character out to level 20. players have mapped their character out to level 20. And then you have players like myself who are, who are like, yeah, I, I will decide at third level, you know, what I'm going to take. And probably I'll make that decision based on what's happened up until now. Yeah. That's the way I like to play. I didn't always do that. <laughs> you know, I used to like mapping things out too. And yeah. then I just, you know, it got to be, for me, it was the case of, like, I never get to play these characters, so it's sort of sad. <laughs> well, for me, I, I, I've stopped doing that just because it's like, even when I get to play them, it's like, I map out to 20, and we only take the character, like, level 4. Oh, five. yeah, yeah. But and for it's just kind of like, yeah, uh, yeah you know, for one, like, you're not. You just get let down, and it's like, you, you, and you realize, I'm building myself up. You're, yes, uh, yeah. I'm letting myself down. Yes. So. Yeah, not every campaign is going to go to 20, which is something to think about. And, and, you know, you might want to think about it and talk about it in your session zero beforehand, but first session is also another place to, to reconsider. What am I doing with the game? Do I have a set end point in mind for the campaign? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, there are a lot of reasons to play a very limited campaign to, and to, to be explicit about it. We're going to play 10 sessions then we're stopping. It draws a sharpness to the campaign. There's not like a bunch of, of, of what are we going to do next? How am I going to set things up for the long term? Just like we've got these one or two things we want to do. 
and we're going to do them. We're going to have a great time, maybe you stretch it out a little, you know, but you say, yeah, we're going to go six levels or, or however much, 10 mm -hmm. sessions. It takes a lot of pressure off of, off of everybody, mm -hmm. right? And you can just enjoy the thing. And then if you want, uh, you know, you can extend it or you can take the characters that you've already made and have bonds with and started and like reboot the campaign. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're, they're whatever level they are, and you just say, okay, well, that, that represents you know, something, you, something you guys did a few years ago. And you've come back, you, you've maybe uh, you know, been apart for a while, and now you've come back, and now this is the campaign proper. We've mm -hmm. tested it out, we know the characters work together, we know that you know, the players work together. Incidentally, this is a really good way to sort of like get a new group off the ground. Mm -hmm. If you don't know everybody, you can just tell them, hey, we're gonna play a limited amount of time. Uh, and, and then we'll see where we want to go from there. Yeah. Uh, because I think there's a lot of players, particularly longtime players or players who are like super into the hobby, where the promise of the long campaign, the promise of an in-depth, multi-layered, complex, sort of sprawling thing is a very like desirable <laughs> sort of wish. And the reality is, is that I think most people don't get that. You know, it takes a lot of work. You have to have players and a dungeon master committed to playing for that length of time. You have to have structures put in place. You don't have to, but it's very helpful to have structures put in place that support you in your goal to uh, have long-term play. If these are some of your first campaigns, if you've never really done one of these before, like totally don't even have that pressure. Just play a little game. Yeah. Do a level of a dungeon. Solve a mystery. One of them, <laughs> you know, yeah. and and then see what you like. You might hate you might hate the game you picked. Yeah, you might not be able to stand it, and and, and or also, your character or and whatever. It, yeah, and also trying to think too long term, too early. Uh, you probably haven't uh, come across the big bad evil guy that is scheduling conflicts. It is scheduling that is the conflicts. The death yes. knell uh -huh. to most campaigns. That, yeah, yeah. But you know, that's that's so. Yeah, that that first venture, first level, you're that. You just like. Yeah. Like take care of your little your little rosebud that's blooming. Just take and, care of yourself. Yeah. Don't worry about the freaking rose bushel that you want. You don't want to win. You're thinking about winning the, the freaking state fair. Yeah, it's enjoy like, no, the no, no. campaign as is. Yeah, yeah. And that that's my thing. It's tend like, your garden. Yeah, tend your garden. Make a character for the campaign as is. Enjoy the campaign mm -hmm. as is. And when it gets to higher level, what you'll find is that I we have this nice organic progression through the levels. A good long time playing. We've got established the relationships between characters in the world and characters in each other mm -hmm. and it can be very satisfying trying to rush that trying to push it and trust me i read a lot of y'all's guys <laughs> read most of y'all's questions um emma reads all of them and there's a lot of of sort of people out there wondering like hey how do i do this how do i get players involved how do i get them invested how do i uh keep things going over the long term and a lot of that is like not skipping things letting mm -hmm. giving things time to breathe and uh, you know, stretching things out a bit so that the campaign doesn't run at a breakneck pace and you have time to sort of explore the side quests of some characters and then move over here to some others and you start weaving them together mm -hmm. and uh, it's a very satisfying way to play but it's different than like the adventure path style where it's like you have a mission, a quest yeah. and you've come together to do that. So, would you say that uh, that you, that your T biffs traits, bonds, ideals, flaws mm. um, yeah. are more important at lower level, starting at lower level, than they are like later on in the campaign? Because I mean, mm. really, for the character, it's a it's yeah. a it's a weird kind of like background or you know sure. core to the character. Yeah. That whether or not they show it or not, depending on the, the what it is. Yeah. Uh, how how much do you do you encompass that, or do you just worry about the flaw? Yeah, I, I like all of them, and yeah. I think they're all worth uh, reviewing. And and if it's your first, you're wanting to really kick off a campaign, then incorporating a bond is, is probably what I would use. Yeah. I think I think bond, of all four of them, bonds are probably the better use of uh, of a motivator in that yeah. sense for uh, you know for characters. And if if you're not if you're not playing fifth edition, then it, you know it'd just be you know what do your characters find important? Who you know, mm -hmm. is there a person in their life or a group in their life that is particularly uh, meaningful to them you don't i would s caution away from threatening that thing like threatening it with non-existence right like if, oh there are many ways know, to threaten without just straight up killing i mean because right. that leads to a lot of stereotypes you know of like it, well, i don't have any family it's yeah like, you just sprung out of the ground are you a dwarf yeah 
like like a lot of things for yeah. one right <laughs> like a lot of things problematic player behaviors when you go digging around and you go looking for things chances are there's a dm doing something that the player is doesn't like doesn't want and is compensating not always yeah. But a lot of the times, and so like that's one of them. Like, are they making characters that aren't connected to the world and and have, uh, you know, ties there? Yeah. Chances are they were either punished for it or read about it and and just uh, don't. But yeah. I love first adventures. I love first level D and D. I mm -hmm. love the start of a campaign. That they're they're really great. Uh, it can fall flat on its face. Pick yourself up. Start over again. Yeah. Um, it's like riding a bike. <laughs> right. Uh, it, you know, examine why it fell flat on its face and, and sort of like see, is it mm -hmm. something about the setting, something about the setup, something about the dynamics of the characters? Sometimes even though you talk about it beforehand, the characters and the campaign don't really match. And then the group has to make a decision, which one is going to get changed, which one, uh, or, you know, are we going to stick with? And I kind of err on the side of the characters. You know, I, if, this, if these are the, the characters that the players want to play, then I want to run a game for those characters. Yeah. And I would rather design a whole new setting. I would rather create something from scratch that will work, that will work for that group than to tell that group, listen, here's, my, here's the thing I'm running. You should have made characters that done that. Yeah, that monk's not going to work. There's no sorcerers. You know, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I get it. Like, I, I think that there's nothing wrong with saying my, you know, the, the campaign that you want to run has these certain constraints to it. There's, you know, these options are not available or it's a long running one. You've invested a lot in it. But to me, when those two things come into conflict, the, 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 the heart of RPGs is the act of making decisions and engaging with this imaginary world. And players are more likely to do that with uh, characters that they care about. Yeah, and I don't. I would prefer not to, uh, you know, to to mess with that. I can always make another setting, you know, uh, and, and one that works. And yeah. so, I, I think that like those are some things that I try to keep in mind. I don't want to pressure myself, um, and you know, it's uh, relax. Mm -hmm. The only things that need to happen in a first session are establishing if you've got a central threat, if you've got a an organization or a bad guy that's going to be the threat for a while. It's time, first session, never too early. Just let, start introducing the bottom rungs mm -hmm. of that organization, the, the, the minions of that yeah. big bad guy. And the just, information gatherers, the pickpockets, uh -huh. the whatever. Yeah. yeah, start the wheels rolling on that. The advice is, is that whatever your campaign's going to be about, that's what the first session should be. Mm -hmm. If your campaign is going to be about Vag, you know, vagrant murder, <laughs> you know, vagrant murderers and thieves who wander around the countryside and, and break into, uh, you know, tombs and stuff, then, then it's okay to kind of have kind of a meandering sort of a start. But you might start with them right at the entrance to a barrow mount. You know, if you're, if the caravan guard scenario is, is the one that you're going to start with, then have them, you know, in, on the caravan in a, in a position to make a decision about something. You know, it doesn't have to be combat. It could be, how are we going to cross this river? Mm -hmm. Which of these two paths are we going to take? I was just thinking, you know what I, mean? I was just thinking of, uh, I think a great one would be, you're starting at a fork in the road, except when you look at the map, there's no fork. You have a uh, mystery, you have a decision to make. Maybe there's a threat coming up behind you. Yeah. But, you know, you could, that could even be something that the big bad evil guy set in your way yeah. as an immediate uh, impediment, yeah. you know, yeah. and you don't know that. Supposed, yeah, but, what are we supposed to do here with this yeah. thing? Yeah, you know, they're just interesting moments, and you and they can come with uh, sort of consequences that spur off into further adventure. I think in this case, like, okay, how did they, where'd this fort come from? Is it the, the you know, our, a villain trying to thwart us? Well, why? We haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's like a natural phenomenon, then, then what makes just natural roads? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's just the earth getting older and that's another wrinkle it's in another her wrinkle, face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worthwhile to kind of go through some other just sort of setup scenarios because a lot of times the setup for how the player or how the characters know each other also provides the hook, yeah, yeah. the initial hook that gets action going. So yeah, all right, Jim, hook me. Hook it. There is the classic tavern, mm -hmm. and it is it, it gets maligned uh, for a very many good reasons. I liked that the newest uh, campaign of Control, <laughs> the first episode was in a tavern. I thought that was ballsy. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> and I think if you go back and watch that one, you can kind of see how the tavern uh, can be done well. And yeah, 
uh, the, the folks over at Critical Role are have, they have an approach to the game that's idiosyncratic to their group, but your group can have uh, you know their own sort of similar idiosyncratic styles. Maybe they don't want to just talk to a bunch of bar patrons, so maybe it's some sort of festival that coincides, and they're just at the the tavern because the tavern is you know a temporary beer garden yeah. for the big festival. Um, uh, you know that you could do uh, something like a wedding or a funeral. And, and have that be the social element, you know, everybody. There's an open bar. There's an open bar. So you know. it's a version. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a dwarf funeral. Of course there's an open bar. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a dwarven wake. <laughs> They're just all pissed drunk. Right. And so, like, you know, it's a wedding. And, uh, you know, which, okay, which one of you uh, has an objection to the wedding? Uh, and, you know, that's where we'll start. Or, you know, it's a funeral. Okay, tell me how you know the particular, you know, the, the person who's been, uh, you know, in the casket. And uh, I think those are, are, are fun ways to start uh, the, sort of like the social, the discrete social scene, because it provides the same kind of atmosphere that a tavern does. There's a lot of people, lots of people to talk to, which in game terms is a lot of ways to learn rumors, which is how you find the adventure. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyway. Well, and also finding out about the world itself. <laughs> finding so out about the world find itself. some context yeah. about said adventure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it could. But it could be that that wedding is the adventure itself. That mm -hmm. maybe something happens there. Maybe someone says something or does something. Maybe it's the PCs. Maybe it's someone else. It could easily spin out into, you know, an adventure of some kind. Mm -hmm. Especially if the the characters have ties to NPCs that are there. Uh, that are important. For. See, now I'm just thinking, like, if you go to a funeral that everybody kind of knows, and it becomes a funeral slash will reading where the deceased wants whoever to find who killed him. Oh, you know, yeah. Take off of your idea, and whoever does yes. gets their gets their loot, and you set loot, yeah. up the entire campaign. Yeah. I and it's to... definitive. It's not really a railroad. Yeah. But well, you know where you know where the train tracks come back to. I will least. say this. I'm going to say this for railroads. First off, we have said before many times that the, the railroad, which I, I'm, you know, I, I try to prefer linear, uh, you know, linear play, yeah. and the open world sandbox represent you know, two ends of a spectrum, and that chances are you fall somewhere along the middle, and not per, it's not a fixed place either. Right. And I think if there's any place that you are going to um, limit the options of the players then it is in an opening scenario. And oh, yeah. I, I, my, my personal uh, opinion is that you should be honest and open about this. You should say, I am not prepared as much as I normally would. I, I have some stuff here that I want to use to propel us in a direction. It's not going to last the entire campaign, but it's going to get us going. Except the limited amount of options that they would have in exchange for a more engaging session. Mm -hmm. That's one way to do it. That's another one, like attacking or threatening a shared interest of the party. And, and even if it's a meta shared interest, Right, like not all the characters might have, uh, you know, bonds with each other or or whatnot, but you know that the players all like this one NPC that you guys talked about sometime, or they like this one spot. Then maybe threatening that one can uh, be enough to get the party to come together uh, and um, you know stick around and have some uh, fun adventures. Another one is to just start playing. Like, do you have a dungeon? Start them right in front. Start them within sight of the dungeon. Why are they all together? I don't know. We'll figure that out as we play. Like, there's a... I know that immersive experiences are important for players and DMs. I know that having a certain feel to the game is very important. But at the end of the day, like, did you show up at this table with a character sheet and dice? Then play. <laughs> like, do, like, there seems to be a lot of sort of hurdles put in front of uh, a group coming together and getting to the adventure. And at the heart of it... There's really nothing wrong with going like, here's where the adventure I prepared starts. Let's start there and not do this lead in, which some people might find boring, which isn't necessarily connected to this thing that I've got prepared for us for this first adventure. Maybe we get distracted and, and you know, can't do what we want or something like that. And like you just cut all that out and handle it like in table talk when you're just hanging out or mm -hmm. you know just chat with each other. Oh, I think my character knows your character through this or maybe they've heard of you by this reputation or something like that. Or maybe it comes out in flashbacks as you play. But I, I'll be honest and I've played enough games where I just I didn't personally didn't care how the party knew each other and would just tell you know the player who were introducing a new character like I don't care you just start playing it's not detrimental it doesn't like would you know it doesn't take anything away and within a couple of sessions it's not going to matter mm -hmm. that 
that person, that party member just kind of showed up out of the blue or that five randos, <laughs> five, six random people in a tavern just decided to go adventuring together. Once mm-hmm. you guys start adventuring, how you know each other, how they uh, relate to one another in the adventure is what's more important than what happened before then. So that's, that's, that's always what I wanted to try, which is like, let's just start yeah. playing. Like, why do we even care about this? It's yeah. going to come together eventually. Let's trust that we will figure it out and get to, uh, get to that thing, you know, which we talked earlier about, maybe not. Anyway, don't, we're going to give you a lot of contradictory evidence if you didn't know that already. Well, it's human nature. We are contradictory beings. Oh, sure, sure, um, sure. Uh, so I've got a lot of setups that I just was brainstorming. Maybe you've all got the same employer or patron. Oh yeah. Right. You know, that's, that's a, that's the classic one. Uh, or you're, you know, mutual, everybody's a mutual friend with someone. There's an NPC that everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. And the NPC is the linchpin. Maybe the NPC is a quest giver, uh, themselves, maybe they're, you know, some kind of resource or something like that, uh, for the party, but that's a good way to kind of get people to come together. Yeah. You gave me an idea for, uh, the, the one shot we're going to run here at RenCon. Yeah. Right, yes. Well, by the time this episode comes out that we ran it. Ren yeah. Con. Yeah. By the, so I'm yeah. going to talk about it. <laughs> Uh, I'm sitting there like, because the role for initiative in a bar, like, I was just like, that would be kind of fun. Yeah. And so I think what I'm going to do, since it's the Don, Donathan Coloroni. Yes. And he needs some strong adventurers. He just sends some paid thugs in there to be like, start a fight. Start a fight. Whoever's left, see. that's who we'll get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's how we're going to start it. It's just a bar fight breaks out and a yeah. chair, bar stools start flying. You get hit. You get hit with a bar- bottle, like play into the confusion of it. Right, right, right. So that by the end of it. You know, there's some minotaur and some bodyguards <laughs> standing on either side of this little gnome going, you may wonder why I brought you here today, right? but you are the ones who survived the fight. Yeah. So exactly. I'm going to hire you. You're hired. <laughs> what? Hired. You what? Know. Yeah. Here's contracts. Yeah. Uh, Please sign these contracts. That's really good. The thing with, with opening scenarios in any, in any D&D or, or RPG scenario is just like, present, you can present whatever problem you want. You can present whatever scenario you want. But like, when it comes time to make a decision... Do the players have the freedom to make a decision or are they expected to go along one way? Mm-hmm. And I think like when you're starting off a campaign, it's not unreasonable to expect that the players will sort of go one way. But at the same time, that that expectation should come with, uh, at least on the DM's part, should come with an, uh, you know, a responsibility to like incorporate their ideas, make it fun for them. Yeah. And they're, you know, you don't want to just have a thing where you're, presenting what you want to do and not listening to the other players. Yeah. And I still see that a lot. In 2019, you'd think after all these, all, <laughs> all this time, the, the sort of like, this is my story, I'm going to play it, and you're just going to sit through it and, and, and roll some dice, would have gone away, uh, or, but uh, not, not necessarily. Uh, and maybe those people are having fun, but uh, mm-hmm. I haven't found that uh, to be the case for me personally. And, uh, you know, so I like a bit, uh, I like to loosen things up as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. No, I, I'm definitely getting there. I haven't run near as many campaigns, obviously. And I, I totally used to just be like, I, my precious campaign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to start this way and you're going to do this and whatever. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ha- thankfully uh, <laughs> shaking that free and understanding how, like, you know, the more minds that are in from the beginning, you know, the more there is to mine. The more there is to mine. So we've got uh, the party sharing a carriage and it uh, is under attack by highwaymen uh, or some kind of monster, right? That's another one. Uh, yeah, the kick off the action. all random. Yeah, but you can do it where it's just kind of like, I'm going I'm to low-key set a 30-minute timer after we, once we've started playing. All right, you guys are all in the carriage. Just whatever, right? You guys role play for a while. And then I'm just silently on myself. Arrow slams into the 30 minutes later, right. Arrow slams in. All right, make a, make a you know, thing. All right, everybody make a deck save. If something big hits the outside of it. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, you all live in the same village, uh, and you know, and then that might be coupled with like threatening it or or some you know NPC sending you somewhere. Mm-hmm. Ties into the next one, which is a coming of age ritual. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things I like about mutant mutant crawl classics is it assumes your first adventure is your coming of age ritual. Ah. That the village has sent you, the village you're a part of, has sent you out into the wasteland to gather whatever sacred technology you can go visit this ancient site and recover you know what you can from it and then afterwards you are a seeker you know someone who goes out 
and and engages with the larger world for your village. Yeah. And um, you know, if you're playing in a point to light setting, uh, you do something like that. Um, maybe you're all prisoners together. Rip off uh, one of the mini Elder Scrolls games and <laughs> use one of those <laughs> intro scenarios. Uh, you're all kidnapped by the same mad mage or whatever. Uh, tournaments, jousts, festivals uh, is one uh, a good one, especially if you want to provide some sort of framework. Introduce you know, social and combat are your two uh, priorities there. Um, you're all siblings together and have been given a task by either your family, you know, the, the head of the house, or like you're, you know, branded or marked or something like that. You know, a reason to stick together might be like you're persecuted or criminals or, you know, falsely accused or, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, if it's a noble thing, you've caught up in a noble conflict or something. Oh, well, I mean, like thinking about that, just like what if it, what if the, the setup is uh, there was a big war and y'all were just foot soldiers, but yeah. your side lost. Yeah. You weren't captured. But you're behind enemy lines now. Yes, yeah, and that's another. You that's don't another know one. who might recognize you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there's conflict in the group. Some of you are are, are you know taking off your tabards and and, and mm -hmm. heraldic uh, you know signifiers, and others are proudly keeping them on, and you're just like having to make it back through enemy territory to a friendly side while you're beset by enemies is uh, is really fun. Just any kind of military campaigns like that are are. are uh, are fun because you can medieval and, and ancient world they're, they're not like as uh, I don't know what you call it as strict with like going AWOL yeah. you know they're, they're not as much formalized uh, whatever but uh, you mm -hmm. can, can kind of shirk authority yeah. and, and you're yeah. like yeah we're all members of this uh, you know we're all members of this militia company but uh, we sneak out and got out of here or our you know our our platoon was like decimated like not even decimated like just, just devastated we're the only ones left and now we're you know we do what we want to do mm -hmm. um that's how pirate bands start. Exactly, right? <laughs> that's how, yeah, that's how it all starts. Um, along with similar lines, you could be refugees. Uh, you could be like newly arrived to a city. Uh, Tecumel is a, a setting, sort of first settings for D&D. &D. And um, the main city there, Jakala, you're foreign barbarians who barely speak the language and are newly arrived. And you've got to find a patron in the city. You've got to curry their favor. You need to find some place to stay, some place to eat. And like... That's the game. Like there, you, the act of doing those things, given the social constraints of this setting, which is highly socially stratified, a very rigid society, very much uh, defined by customs and and sort of uh, etiquette. And you are these uncouth foreigners who've come here, but because you're uncouth foreigners, you're very useful. Mm. And and so it's the interplay between seeking a patron, surviving in the city, and doing favors for that patron, climbing up the social ranks that propels adventure. And uh, I've always wanted to sort of use, a, use that as a scenario. Um, uh, what else we got here? We've got they're far from home and having to get back, sort of what uh, you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they wake up uh, on a deserted isle uh, from a shipwreck, de debris all around them, they don't really remember what happened. Or they wake up from suspended animation and are like, where are we? When are we? We're some co ultra carbon uh, shit. Right. right there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, you've been, you know, well, we, what are you talking about? We, cast that resurrection spell on you a long time ago and it just didn't work you know it just took too long mm -hmm. and then the last one for me of all the ones that i was sort of thinking of was you are late your characters are late for another hook like so it, it's sort of uh the similar to the way enemy within and warhammer starts out you're given this thing of like hey this count is going off into these mountains to reclaim a dwarf city and it's like you know you'll get a share of the treasure and spoils and all this other stuff and the premise is, is that your characters are on their way to this expedition. They get held up. One of the, uh, you know, the creatures that holds them up looks just like one of the PCs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thus spurs this adventure. And the book never once. It's just like, yeah, if they inquire about this expedition, it, it, went, it lost. And, like, two weeks later, word comes back that they're all dead. You know, it was a disaster. Yeah. Uh, the party lucked out. But I always wanted to have one where it's like, no, you're, you're, like, late for this expedition. It's left already. Do you go try to find them? Do you go somewhere else? Do you just commiserate about being late? Yeah. <laughs> and, and therefore adventure follows? Like, I, I think it could be a fun one. Like, the party is all trying to get somewhere to go do something individually, and it's in the not able to do that that they become a party and find something else to do. Plenty of meat to <laughs> chew on there for, uh, for our loyal viewers. Yeah. I, I imagine we'll come back and revisit this. There's so many different ways to approach it. You yeah. can approach it like it's a one shot of no consequence and then build up on it. You can approach it like you're laying the foundations for something large and grand and, mm -hmm. and really giving it a lot of thoughts. And, um, 
Yeah, so I, I imagine this is something we're gonna come back to. Yeah. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. The Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Okay, yeah. Jim, I have to ask this question because what? halfway through we were talking, what was the name of that episode as you understood it? What were we doing? This? <laughs> yeah. Ways to start a campaign. Okay. That's, that's, what, that, I, that's that, what I thought. That's what I thought. Um, yeah, what no, is, no, no. no. We were literally having a different conversation and then I stopped asking certain questions because I... Like, oh, I was seriously under thinking? the understanding that this was how to start a campaign at first level. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, this was just, like, ways to start a campaign. Like, ways to kick it off. Like, something other than in a tavern is what I, what I took the request to be. I mean, we're having mostly the same conversation, but it is, you know. No, no, okay. I'm sorry, Jim, but look at number oh, nine that? and what it says. What does it say? Ah, that's okay. Creative ways to start a campaign at first level. All that's right. the conversation that I was that having. Thinking, and uh, about halfway through, I realized, like, he's not really... talking about just first level, so I kind of left it alone. I mean, I but... wasn't talking about explicitly not first level. 